Hello everybody, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I've been sitting here, actually, in anticipation of this Facebook Live, waiting for the clock to chime so that we could get to start. So today, we've had a few requests for, for some things that I'm going to show you. I'm going to do some more painting, I'm going to show you a brand new kit, and I'm also going to revisit one of the older ones. So we had a um, With All Your Heart kit on air recently, and it was one where when I was talking about, and I think one of the presenters said to me, how many kits can you make for that, from that? Or how many cards can you make from that kit? So I, I think you could make probably about 80. So I wanted to show you how you can do that, but also there's a couple of other things. We've had a couple of requests from people for more of the decoupage elements. So we're gonna put those on a link after this Facebook Live so you can actually download these and you can cut more for yourself. The cards that I'm gonna make are not gonna use these. So I'm gonna show you how you can make it go a little bit further. But on the actual paper kit itself, inside there, you've got envelopes and you've also got inserts. Now, if I took just the flowers off the envelopes and the inserts, we are looking at um, probably about, I think there's 20 designs. I'm just gonna double check this. So we've got five designs of envelopes and there's four of each. On each envelope, there are two flowers. And then there are the inserts, and on each of the inserts, there are two flowers. So that's, um, that's, that's 80 flowers just in that. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use one flower on one card, an insert on another, and then that still leaves you with all the other elements that you've got to carry on making more cards. And if I'd had a little bit more time, I was gonna sit and actually make the 80 cards, but unfortunately, I ran, ran out of time. And then, worst thing was, just before this show, we realized we didn't have a paper kit at all. So I've actually sneaked what we call our gold sample. So every time we actually create something here at iHub, we have one sample and it is put under lock and key. Nobody's allowed to touch it, except in cases like this, where it's an absolute emergency. So I've taken one of the inserts. It could have been any of them. This just happened to be the one that was on the top. And I've then cut myself an A4 piece of card and I've folded it so it's gonna fit inside that card. But you can see already, it's actually short. So I need another piece of card here that is going to create the rest of the card. So all I would do here, and this is a, a, a quick little thing to do, take some of my finger lift tape and just lift that off and then butt the piece of card so that it is level on the bottom up to so if I show you it this way this will work just as well so it's level on the bottom so I know it's straight I'm going up to the fold like that and once it's in place let that grab so fold that over and then turn it over and from the reverse, just trim away the excess. So that's usual guillotines if you've got them at home or your trimmers. I'm just doing this for speed like this, but it means <laughs> okay, we'll start again. So shall let me show you what I've done. Sorry, I can't afford to get the giggles to I've got far too much to get through. So I stuck it perfectly. It was sticking out perfectly. And what did I do? I chopped it off. So I just chopped off the bit that was sticking out, which was the bit we wanted. So we're gonna take that off again. Look at how good this tape is. It doesn't want to be torn. Put some more tape on and repeat the process. So don't do what I do. Oh dear, that was good. I got through a whole two and a half minutes <laughs> without making a mistake. Oh, well, sorry, I should say before the first mistake. <gasps> I've just realized something. Last night I got in from Crate and Craft and it was late. It was very late. Um, I've been at the studio. I'm just gonna get this so that 
I've got it right. So I'm just doing it. I've been at the studio, as you guys probably saw, and um, I got home and was too excited about different things. You need to keep it closed when you trim off the excess. And um, got really, really excited because I was, I'd got home and I got loads to tell Carl and Darcy and Betty were really excited to see me. And I sat down and it was on, I think it was on channel four or channel five. And there's this thing about bloopers. <laughs> me and Nancy on a bloopers program on the telly I'm like oh my goodness and I thought at first I thought I'm watching Create and Craft and then I thought I can't remember no no that Nancy and I did that kit ages ago and that because I thought it was a repeat and then I realized they've got us on this on this bloopers thing and then there's Howard who's one of the presenters from Ideal World on actually doing the comparing and I'm like this seems so wrong he's meant to be on our side not talking about us right so I'm just going to trim off this excess because it's a little bit longer than I would like so just do your measuring beforehand because I didn't measure this well I did I've marked it but then didn't trim it properly so I'm just going to get that so it's the right size oops it's a little bit there and so there's my card, there's my wrap, right. So a, a really nice, simple card. And I did something similar to this as a wedding anniversary card for Carl. And I couldn't find a card that really said the words that I wanted to say. And we've been married a few years now. And you know, sometimes you don't take, always take the time to tell the people that are close to you how important they are. And so I found a really nice piece of printed paper and it was just script it didn't really say anything and then I took so I had a card that was just script then I took and created a little topper exactly like this one so I had a mat behind then another one on top and a layer of foam to support it and then I took another piece of card that went over the top and hand wrote on it just happy anniversary and inside I wrote him a little message and I wrote the things that we sometimes don't know how to say. And I felt really, I felt really happy about it because I'd said all the things that I think sometimes I forget. And when I got downstairs on the morning of our anniversary, and he won't thank me for telling this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Um, he was making a cup of tea and when he turned around, he said, I actually feel really emotional. And he's not that kind of guy, he's a proper bloke, you know, but, that's how important it is that we actually tell people the things that really matter. And sometimes the front of the card's not always the most important. But anyway, rather than just have a plain white square on there, I've created this little corner. And I'm just gonna pull that back and then slot that back on again. And you can see that it just adds a little bit of interest. So it's basically a strip of card that goes over the corner and then you wrap it along the seam of the cardstock. So you're using that to create your fold. And then on the back, you just trim off the excess. Now we can either use foam or you can use regular tape. And I'm just gonna use some regular tape to hold this down. And so I'll take the back off my tape and that is gonna go on the card. You might be thinking, I've not taped that piece down, but actually it's gonna be held in place by the two sides. So let's get that onto my card there. And it's just added a little bit of extra detail. And then I've cut the word special day out of one of the dies that's coming up in my signature collection that launches on Friday. But it's a very simple card the little corner makes all the difference. It's that attention to detail, uh, but it doesn't include lots of decoupage and lots of layers. So a simple way of creating one of the cards from that collection. So let's move on to another one that I've got for you. So I've got another one here. And this one is using part of an envelope. So this one, remember on the envelopes, you're getting two of each of the flowers. So I'm gonna show you what I would like to do with this. So first of all, I am going to pick the point 
at which I'm going to trim the edge and I think I'm going to take it there. So I'm just going to go round my decoupage but anywhere that I would be continuing that line I'm going to go straight and then I'm going to go round my flowers again and remember I'm anywhere I'm going straight down that line and let's make it easier for you to be able to see where I'm going. Um, I can use this and this piece of card so just using my craft mat to make sure I've got everything straight which I have there and I'm going to just come up here that little bit there that bit there and that bit there now trick let's go into our guillotine so remember with these guillotines this is actually a trimmer and it's got an arrowhead blade but what I love about this is that the actual point of the blade is where it pierces the cardstock so you can be really accurate with your cutting so if I take this and I line up the central cutting line so this piece here with where I've scored it I can see exactly where I need to be and the blade will stop here so I'm looking at those flowers and I know that I need to stop there and then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to go back in just a little bit further and I need that bit and I'm going to come back up a bit and I need that bit and back up I think I might have just done that piece but just in case there so now when I come round here and I snip round the flowers you will see how those pieces are just going to fall away can see that's got a little piece to release there and then here again so I'm just going to take that piece round and then here just going round those little flower heads and you're wiggling your card rather than moving the scissors so as I'm closing the blade I'm wiggling the card cutting out I used to love doing decoupage by hand because it is so therapeutic and I've now created that over the edge design then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut myself a little V so I've created that into a tag we're now going to take it onto one of the panels that's come out of the paper kit like this and I'm going to come up again here and I'm going to cut into that again with another tag. So we go. We've got another piece of cardstock that I'm going to do the same with again. I'm going to hold it together. I'm going to go up from that V there to here. Go across from this one to there. And I've created my flag. So I've taken a design that's off one of the envelopes. I've used it to create the flag shape and I've then created my design. Now look what happens when I pop that onto my card. Look at how well that brings the design together. If I just centre that into the card itself and line that all up before it gets stuck, you're going to see that from that one element, I'm just going to find my special day that's going to go down the bottom. Again, you've created another little card. So when I'm talking about making 80 cards from my kit, it might not mean that you're going to use every one with every flower on top of it. But if that is your choice, then you've got that download to now use. And don't forget, when you're cutting out, turn the paper, not the scissors, and you'll get really good results. Right, let's move this out the way. And I've got a few questions that have come in that I'd like to answer. And I'm going to be looking at those questions while I just get ready to paint, if that's okay with you guys. So, um, and a big thank you to everybody that's joining in as we go along, because I know a lot of you don't always have the chance to stay for the whole thing, and you literally join in as we go along. So I'm just going to reach my paints. So, excuse me, reaching across the tables. And I'm going to let you guess what I'm going to paint with these colours. 
So I've got yellows and oranges and a green and a black and a white. So I thought we'd do some really pretty sort of hybridy daisies. So I'm going to work on black card because I think it really makes the colour pop. And we're going to put some car some colour out onto this piece of cardstock. Now, at home, I think I've spoken about this a few times, a plate is brilliant because acrylic paint, and particularly the Cadence hybrids, it actually washes off really easily. And it's drain safe because it's water-based, there's nothing nasty in here, and you get really, really good results. So I'm just gonna put out a little amount of it, about a 2P piece for the white. I'm just gonna give this yellow a little shake. And I'm going to put out a smaller amount of yellow. So let's get just a tiny bit of yellow. Uh, we'll have a little bit of the orange, which is really pretty. Oh, and I'll tell you what, we can do a giveaway. And I am gonna give away this set of paints that I'm working with. I'm gonna, I'll give away that, I'll give away my painting and I will also, I'll wash out the brushes and give you those as well. So whoever would like to actually put their name down will get you a little starter kit to get you started. So tiniest little bit of black and we're good to go. So I've had to fish out some paint brushes. So I've got quite a lot of stuff at Create and Craft at the moment. So it's been a bit of a challenge in finding all my supplies because they're dotted all over the place. So a couple of glue applicators. These are gonna be really, really useful for what I'm doing. And then I've got a, um, a 10 millimeter brush, so a centimeter, half a centimeter, and then just a little diddy one that I'm going to use. And it's probably more for the end rather than the actual brush itself. So I'm not using any gel medium with this because we're, we're working with it as on um, absolutely pristine ink and color, so, well, paint and color. So I'm actually going to put white on both sides of my brush. I'm just going to blend that white in. So I'm literally working the white into the bristles of the brush. And remember everybody, the end where the bristles will come together is called the chisel edge and we need that to be really sharp and we need those brushes to be, to, the bristles to be together. So just backwards and forwards until we get plenty of white in. And once the brush is loaded, I'm not scared of loading it from the tip. That's actually okay, because I do want that white all along the brush itself. And now we're gonna side load. And I'm gonna side load with the yellow on one side, so I've got a little just dot of it, and the orange on the other. So a little bit of orange and a little bit of white, and look what happens. This is like magic. So use your little finger to support your hand. You know, if you don't, sometimes you can be like this, but with your little finger, it's much, much easier to have precision and also control what you're doing. Brush on the chisel edge, just press down, and then look at how we're bringing those stripes in. And if I do this a couple of times, you'll see that color just blending through the actual bristles. So I'm just going to load this a bit better so I don't get these little blobby bits. Not that that would, is going to matter too much. So try and keep the yellow on the yellow and the orange on the orange. And then we're going to take these little petals and we're just going to elongate them a little bit. So I'm just going to brush it slightly so I'm blending the colour. And then I'm going to pull it in. And then brush it a little bit and pull it in. Let's come up here, brush and pull it in brush and pull in brush don't worry about the middle because we've got things happening in the middle in a minute brush and pull in and then don't like that one so you can go over it and then one more just for good luck in the middle there and go in so i've got all those little petals there well before we do the middle i'm going to keep the color as it is i'm going to take the orange to the green and the white to the white and let's blend those and so what will happen is, just by having that little bit of orange in the green, it tints the colour and brings the shades together. So now we're just going to bring in a few of these little leaves that are just going to fill in the design. 
And remember what I said to you the last time we were painting and I said it was sometimes it's quite nice to let the paint fade away. You're in control of that, whether you want it fading away or you want the colour to be really strong. Sometimes it's really nice, particularly on pieces of furniture where you want it to look a little bit chalky. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black that I've got here and I've got the wrong end of my brush. And I'm just going to start by swirling in a black circle. So you literally, all you're doing is drawing in a circle. So you've swirled that into the middle. Then, I'll just put this down so I don't get it everywhere. Take your dry brush that you've got and you're just going to flick out the edges of it. So can you see by flicking it out, it sort of like feathers it a little bit and makes it look like it's meant to be like it. And then I'm going to take the edge of the brush and I'm just going to flick out again. So I'm going to flick out little bits of the paint so that it fits and those little stamens just come into the middle. Now we go back with our brush and we're going to put some dots in. So I'm just going to put some little dots in centre, like that. And if you don't feel that you've got good control with the bottom of the brush, then you take your little glue stick and you use your glue stick. And you can get really fine little detail dots, which are just so much fun but really quick and easy and the finishing touch and then the final last little thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the black and I'm just going to go back into where the dots are a little bit bigger and put the tiniest little bit of black. Look how quick it was to do. It's quick, it's fun and it's really really effective. So Using the leaf that we learnt before, but triple loading the brush, we're creating little daisies. And as I come to do this more and more on Create and Craft, I'm going to be teaching you more of that alphabet, how you actually join it together to create your joined up writing, and we're going to be doing bigger and bigger projects. So little sneaky peeks. We've got new brushes coming in stock, and I'm actually creating what we call painting pages. So I've drawn them out for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover them in acetate or in a special coating so that you can actually trace over the work and create your own fabulous designs. So that's another one of our little projects for you. Oops, I think I might have just put my thumb in something. Oops. So that was a bit like me last night being so smart when I was doing that. Um, I'm just going to have to get these tissues coming uh, my way. Um, I was being so smart when I was doing that screen sensation show yesterday, wearing my favourite blouse, which is white, because I was so sure I wasn't going to get paint on it. So the first thing I had to do when I got back to my dressing room, because of course I did get paint on it as I was tidying up, was wipe it. And you know the paint? It's fabulous fabric paint. It stays on perfectly. So not only did I get paint on my new white shirt, my favourite white shirt, I actually fabric painted it. So it's now ready in my pile of crafty stash, ready for me to work out how to put a new diamante pattern on the front. Right, let's have a little look at a couple of other things. So I've got this. Now, I've got a sneaky little peek of something that I'm going to show you. So imagine that every piece of card you had in your craft stash could be textured. It could have um, a linen look. It could have a handmade card look. It could have a crumpled card look. Or it could actually be hammered card. That's what we've got in some brand new embossing folders that are coming up. And... Just to show you how fabulous they are, I'm going to do a little bit minking. So, first of all, we've got back in stock the rare earth, rare earth in fact, um, our dusting brushes. 
Now, these dusting brushes, the, the actual hairs of the brush are shaved. So they, it's a bit like when you have your hair cut and instead of the, the hairdresser cutting everything on a straight line, she feathers the edges. All of these edges are feathered. So it means not only do they make fabulous makeup brushes, but they also allow us to blend beautifully. So when I'm blending, I take a little bit of my ink, so my berry whip, which is here, and I'm gonna pick it up on my brush. And I pick it up in a circular motion. I tend to go clockwise, and the reason that I do that is, if you think about when you've got a mixing bowl and you've got the whisk inside and it's whipping round, what it does is you can see the lines and the direction that it's going and it pushes it up the side of the bowl. If a mixer you were able to reverse, you would actually would pick up the cream and it would be pushing it back the other way. That's what happens on a brush. So the inks load in this way, but if I then load, actually turn my brush and I, instead of going like that, I go anti-clockwise, what you actually then do is pick up the ink that's on the other side of the bristles. So your ink actually goes further. So start on the edge of the, off the card and just very gently come over the edge. And you can see how I can start to build this up but instead of me getting really harsh, soft finish, if I came on here and I come straight on here, you get this harshness that you then have to blend away. Whereas by coming off and on, I can choose how soft or how gentle I want it to be. And those two colors or those two pieces of color will blend seamlessly. What's really nice is that this actually brings the cardstock to life. So you're going to have a lot of fun with these new embossing folders. We haven't got to wait long, only until the August bank holiday, but they're part of a bigger secret and a bigger secret that I'll see if I can be brave enough to share to you. Um, we'll have a think about it, but perhaps next week. Right, let's pop those to one side, but you can see texture. Every piece of card you've got, always beautifully textured. So what else is happening this week? Well, Nancy's gone over to Ireland, so she's gone to visit her mom, so that's a little bit exciting. Um, I have, um, we all the flowers are off the roses, so we've had to actually take all the, deadhead them all. It was a bit of a big job as well, because there were a lot of roses, and I, kept, I could hear this noise, I was like, what is that noise? Went outside to find that all the roses had been deadheaded, because Carl had done them with the chainsaw. So I'll take a picture of those and let you see. He was quite proud because what had taken me about 15 minutes to do, which was a little bundle like that, he'd done the whole garden in about 40 minutes. So that was that. Um, the weather's pretty average. It's a little bit rainy today, but that means it's perfect crafting weather. And I am just super duper excited because for those of you that watch at the Create and Craft at the weekends, I've actually got a weekender and it's the first time that I've had a signature collection at the weekend for, I think, ever. And this one is a ring around a posy. And it's, there's two things about this. One of them is I've been reminiscing a lot about my mom. And so she used to, as a child, she used to do the ring around a posy on my hand. And then the other thing was all of those beautiful flowers in the garden. I wanted to create wreaths and posies with them. So this is the new collection. These are some of the lovely cards. Vicky always does amazing cards for us. And this is just some of them that she's done. So creating the posy around the outside. And then bringing in just some circle cutting and then some tearing. And you'll be noticing the vellum and this fabulous foiled effect at the back. More circles because they lend themselves to the design. The actual sentiments that are included in here. Some really pretty um, colouring from the stamps, which Lily's been doing with us. And this, we just want to share this with you. So ways of using vellum to actually bridge between the panels and the colour. So I'm going to show you what's in here and I'm going to show you lots of different things that we can do. So we've got a few different kinds of giveaways. 
Right, so this is my box. This is the one that's got my kit in it. And I sat and cut these flowers out. And with the exception, I think, of one of the dyes, they go through your baby blue. So it was just a really easy time to just sit and cut. And that wasn't even all of them from the kit. And I like to store my all my dyes on my magnetic sheets. They're backed on a piece of card because it makes it stronger. But it's so easy for me to find them then when I'm working. So this is the Charisma pack. And this is the one that's got all of those Charisma sheets in that I've been cutting up so you can see that. That's what's left of the pack from down there. Then I've got these little A6 toppers. Now these aren't just toppers, these are fabulous little postcards. They're gonna be great if you want to do star cards, which I'm gonna be demonstrating on Friday when I'm on. But also, they're clever, because this card is now a portrait card or a landscape card. But if I take my little trimmer, I can now cut into this and do that. And I can now make this, take it from being a rectangle to a square. And I've now got a little, a separate little panel that I can be using on something else. I can be using this as a, here's a different one with a different position. So again, I've created a plain card, but this one now allows me to actually put, let me find one of them, my little panels on it. So you've got lots of inspiration, lots of different ideas, but it gets even better. And I'm really, really excited about this because inside you're gonna find vellums. Beautiful, beautiful foiled gold vellum. It's just exquisite. And this one is gonna be one of my demonstrations where I've taken the actual foil the foiled vellum, and I'm just gonna create a wrap around a plain piece of card. So that is actually now my card front. But I want it to be a little bit more exciting than that. So I took the top of the piece of card, so this was the rest of the A4, of both the vellum and the white cardstock, and I'm going to make a little jacket, a little wrap to go around the front of my card. And then I can then embellish it and build up my design with lots of different ways of adding elements to it. So it's a really nice way of being able to create some interesting and decorative designs. Or how about I actually use this as like a buckle. So this gets threaded through my circle and that actually will go through the circle or I could put another piece of cardstock through. So again, another little idea from you, for you. And then one of the best parts of the whole kit, and because remember you've got all the different colours that you need in here, well, you get the stamps and you get everything else, but it's the card pack because look at, see, that looks like metal, doesn't it? It looks like it's a, a crushed piece of gold card. It's a flat piece. Of print it's been so cleverly printed that it looks like it's got that sheen and the shine on it but actually that isn't cardstock at all it is cardstock I guess but not a uh, textured cardstock it's a printed cardstock so this is going to bring the whole thing to life so I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you of course I've got the dies in there I've got some lovely pretty sentiments as well but the fact that the colors are all going to go together that we've got the vellum on here and so I'm gonna make you a quick little card. And so what we'll do, I've got some mats and layers already done and I've got the piece of vellum. So one thing that puts people off using vellum is how do we actually glue it down? And so there are a few things that we can bear in mind. I could place the glue behind these panels and then these edges might turn up. Well, actually we might want them to turn up so how about if we take one of our little tools and I just roll that edge just enough so that it looks like it was meant to be. And that actually is much more forgiving then 
than things that are just lifting up. So that's one of the things. So I'm going to stick this down ready because I'm happy that I've just put my adhesive behind where my panel's going to go. So let's choose to put it right in the middle, making sure that it wouldn't show over the edges. You can get vellum glues, but again, I would say use them sparingly, use them um, with care because they can occasionally still show through depending on the colours that you work with. Spray adhesives can be really clever, but what you don't want is you just don't want the adhesive looking ugly. So let's put it on here. So we're going to go like this. You're going to create an embellishment. So I'd like a little embellishment to go on the front. Oh, I've got it on wonky. Oh dear. That's a that's a bad one. Now I've got this thing about straight lines as well. It's quite upsetting really because it can be upsetting for everybody I work with, but it's also it's quite upsetting for me. I don't know, some people have um really that's why I like clutter. Clutter means I can't see where it's meant to be straight. So I'm gonna pop this in the middle and place that down. So I've got some nice layers with a little bit of foam tape to get me some height. I've turned over the corner of my vellum so that it looks like it's meant to be. Doesn't matter if it's lifting up at the corners. And now we're gonna make ourselves an embellishment. So I need to take a little bit of the vellum, which I've got here. And actually that's gonna be the last layer, but I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lay it down so you could see what this would have looked like if I put another layer on. I'll put that there. And then let's get in here and get a little bit more vellum. Right, let's take a look at some of these questions. So, um, Oh, Victoria, Victoria Colp, um, Cole, Cot. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Do any of you remember when I had that awful thing on TV? I laughed and laughed because it was around Christmas time. And you see, I mean, you know, I'm not that good at um, reading out people's names and pronunci pronunciation. And um, I couldn't pronounce this person's name. And I was like, Felicia? Felicia, I know, and I was I was really chuffed with myself when I worked it out, it said Felicia Navidad, and then underneath I read, Happy Christmas, in Spanish, from Joan, and actually, the Felicia Navidad was actually the Happy Christmas, and it wasn't from, it wasn't, that wasn't a name at all, it was from somebody in Spain, and, I've, and if you're watching, because you may be, um, they'll be going, and it wasn't Joan, it was Margaret, but I do remember the the, the Spanish sentiment and of course that started me off giggling so my Victoria would like to know who has been my biggest influence that is really an interesting question because gosh um, I would like to say to you that my biggest influence is probably, well, definitely my mum, because she taught me, and my mum and my grandma taught me so much about crafting, and that's where one of the passions came from. So just while I'm doing this, I'm just gonna let you know what I've done. So I've just folded over a little piece of the vellum. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on here, because I need it to glue as I go along. And I'm then gonna put a piece of tape here. So I'm going through the middle. Okay, so I folded it over to get me started and the tape in the middle is going to hold it together as I'm making this. So mum was definitely a massive influence and then, oh, oh, I thought that was, that was a bit of an alarm then, sorry about that everybody. Um, so my mum and then who else? Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, one of the people that was a big influence on me was actually my maths teacher. When I was a youngster, when I was in my teens, my maths teacher was a big influence. He was very strict. Um, he was an, um, a naval commander because we lived in Malta, went to school out there. But 
I learned a lot about self-discipline from him, about never giving up on things, about following your dreams. And that was actually a really, I was only have been about 15 or 16. And that was a really big influence on me. So yeah, that was, that was, he was in, interesting. Um, a lady called Carol Smith. Carol Smith was the lady that was responsible for actually um, creating and building the Mod Podge brand with a company in America called Plaid. And I was fortunate in the very early years of my craft career to actually work with her. My goodness me, was she tough. But she taught me a lot. She taught me how to respect the industry. She taught me how the customer is always the most important person that you could be working with. That it's okay to indulge yourself and enjoy it yourself. And also that you can never give up learning. You will always learn something. Can I, and all of that came from Carol and that was, she was a big influence too. So I guess they're probably, um, of other people that have influenced me the most but yeah it's interesting so i've made two little tubes of of um vellum and they're going to go across here and i'm just then going to build myself a little bouquet and i'm going to create a bouquet over the little tubes that i've got and then we'll put a sentiment on to finish it off so let's have a look. So I've got a little bit of blue here, which you can see goes with the navy that I've got behind. Just gonna look at where I want to put them. I think I might want to go up there. Or do I want to go, let's just make sure that's not gonna ping out too much. Do I want to come down here? Yes, down here. So to make sure this doesn't ping out any more than it has done, I'm just gonna go round with the tape. And I'm going to do the same on this one. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it off at an angle because they look nicer if they're at an angle. And let's put that one like that. So that's that. And trim this one off at an angle. Try not to squash them too much when you do it. And try and keep them going in the same direction. So that works. Um, right, questions. So, um, hi, this is from Lorraine Farmer. Hi, Lorraine. Says, um, hi, Steph. Do you ever have days when you feel that you have lost your mojo? If so, how do you get back on track? Oh, my gosh. That's so interesting. You can be really tired at the end of a day. And um, I remember going back to the, just in lockdown, going back to the house in Peterborough where, you know, you know, I've been sharing with Mel and we've been keeping our distance, social distancing. And I had, I was tired and she was tired. Um, we were both feeling a little bit flat. And I think it was just the effects of everything that was going on. And we started talking about paint recipes. And I can't remember what time it was when we both went to bed. And the excitement that we generated between the two of us talking about paint I can't tell you was just amazing and felt amazing so I sometimes when I get a little bit um you know maybe thinking I'm sort of lost a bit of the mojo I go back to something where I started my crafting and I remember something I did that I was proud of I think about the projects that I've got still to do I think about what I might be doing at home what might be the things that I want to achieve so what I'm doing here is I want this at an angle but I don't want it um, I don't want it too high so I've just cut that at an angle and I just cut this one it's popped undone so I'm just gonna put a bit more tape on it so um, so yes, I go back to some of the things that I, I want to do. I've been making cushions at home. I've got some screen printing to do. I've got a whole dining room that needs redecorating. Um, I think about the next card that I've got to make for somebody. What would, why would they love the card that I'm going to make? What is it about it? So it, because it's not always about us, you know, sometimes somebody else can be responsible for helping you get your mojo back. 
you know, doing that anniversary card that you know is going to be really well received by somebody, that can be just as rewarding as any other kind of crafting. So don't just feel like it's just about us because it can be all about everybody else as well. Right now, need some flowers. So I'm going to take, I've already cut one of these off. I'm going to cut this one off. And this is important, guys, when we're doing this. So if I'm going to snip this off here, that does not look finished. I've now got a stem that just sticks up there. So come back in and take out that stem because that looks like it's finished. So make sure that you think about it when you're doing this. Now, I'm going to need some foam to be able to put this together. I don't think I've got my silicone see it at the moment. No, we'll manage with foam. So let's pop this down. So I'm going to be wrapping it. So it needs to go down here and down here. I'm going to wrap this across the little scrolls that I've made. And um, yes, yeah, so I hope, Lorraine, that sort of gives you a bit of an idea of, you know, if you are perhaps missing your mojo a bit. I'm just going to get this a little bit flatter. There we go. Then you can um, think of the people that you're going to be sending the projects to because that does always sort of inspire us and make us feel quite, I think, um, I guess I feel quite blessed because I think the people are going to be happy to be receiving what I've created. So that is a good one to, to think about. Um, then what else? Let's see who else has emailed. Um, Marie Milner Armstrong. Oh, nice name. Um, Marie's in, emailed in and she said, um, my question is, what would be your one piece of kit you couldn't survive without? Oh, gosh. Only one? That's not fair. Oh. Um... You know, next time we do questions, can you give me your answers as well so I know a little bit about you? Because I feel like you know about me and I don't know about you. Like, except I know that some of you are still in your pajamas because <laughs> that's what um, duvet days and lockdowns are for, isn't it? Um, let's have a think. What would be the one thing? I can't have one. I can't, that's, that just isn't right. I need more than one. Um, a die cutting machine, I think. I don't think I necessarily need to mind what size, but I definitely have to have a die cutting machine because that just saves me so much time. So is that okay? Um, but I can think of 10 other things. My glass cutting mat, my craft knife, my scissors, my foam tape, my pin flare glue gel, um, some kind of guillotine or trimmer, um, embossing powder or glitter, can't manage without glitter. Um, yeah, it's hard, isn't it, to think of one thing. Okay, right, so I've got some foam here and you can see the foam through the actual um, little pieces of decoupage, but as I layer them up, that foam disappears. So it's a bit like doing a, um, a flower arrangement and then adding in pieces to actually fill in from the background right now I want to try and see if I can find the sentiment that I had right at the beginning and I know what you're probably you can see it and I can't so you're shouting where it is but I'll tell you what it'll be quicker to cut another one so let's get a piece of card and I'll have a special day and in fact not that card but one from in here and so let's have a look at another question so um sue sue foot says what's your favorite tip of, well oh that's an easy one what's your favorite tip or bite while crafting anything <laughs> um anything but no wine is always really nice um, yeah, but I do like a cup of tea, you know, I'm not, especially during the day, I'm not, a, you know, I don't do, can't cope with, um, 
the idea of having to drink early in the daytime, but I do like a nice glass of wine. Quite like um, a tequila, a gin and tonic, a dry martini, a chocolate martini. Um, actually, I'm not picky really, I'll, and I'll take any of those. Then I've got an email from Sue Evans. And she, Hi Sue. Um, Sue says, do you ever get any time off to enjoy your family? Um, absolutely, 100%. I, my, but my family craft with me, so I'm really, really lucky. Um, Carl, <laughs> so my dad, you hear me talk about my dad a lot. So dad, um, who is really important to me, um, he bought Carl as a birthday present, one of those part works. <laughs> so he got, because Carl's building a, so you know, I tell you all these secrets when I do this. And it's only afterwards I think, did I really say that? Um, oh God, I've been rambling for ages as well. Sorry, everybody. Let's have a think about where this is going there. Um, so Carl's rebuilding a DeLorean from scratch. And he wanted to buy one for a long, long time. And I kept saying, no, we can't afford it, we can't afford it. And then he said to me, he said, I found a really cheap one. It completely needs doing up. It's like, and it's only this much money. And it's, I've got, if it's my birthday and my Christmas and my anniversary and everything else for the next ever, however long, is it okay? And I was like, well, I mean, I can't say no really, can I? It's his money as well, so. So I was like, yeah, 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 okay, okay. So he said, right, okay. So then the next day, he said, I said, oh, when are you going to get the car? He said, oh, I've just got to organise a boat. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I bought it from this guy in America, so I've got to get it on a boat and get it over here. I was like, well, that's why it was cheap, because you couldn't get it here. So anyway, he gets it here, and um, then it has to be registered in this country, because it's not registered. So that means that it has to go to this guy who says um, he would do the registration and did something else to it because I think it's got to be, it got, the engine had got to start or something. Anyway, he rings Carl up the, um, after he'd had it about a week. He says, I've got some good news and some bad news. He said, okay, so Carl's like, all right, okay. He said, the good news is, I know you weren't going to keep it red because they're silver originally. So in the metal, they're, it's like a, an aluminium. So you take the paint back to the original aluminium. So he said, I know you weren't going to um, keep it red because somebody had done this bad paint job at home. So Carl's like, yeah, you're right. I didn't. So he said, so the good news is that I've helped you with the paint job. So Carl's like, right. He said, yeah, because the lorry's backed into it and scraped all the back of the bumper. It, it was in pretty bad condition anyway. So he's going to pay to strip the car for you. And then I don't feel bad that it happened in my workshop. So I'm actually not going to charge you either. So anyway, so he gets this car, which was about probably three years ago. It's still in bits. It's still all over the garage, it's still in bits, it's still not built. So my dad decides, I can't even remember why I'm telling you this now. Um, my dad decides for his birthday to buy him this part works, which is build your, oh, I know why, because you asked me about having craft time at home. Um, so this is what happens, Susan. So he actually has got this DeLorean model. So dad buys him a part works, build your own DeLorean, and gives it to him for his birthday. And he only gave him, <laughs> he only gave him, Part one. <laughs> so Carl had to buy all of the <laughs> We're still <laughs> We're still building it. <laughs> that was three years later. <laughs> so that's what he does when I'm crafting. Oh dear. I'm sure what was the most expensive Christmas uh, birthday present he's ever had because he had to pay for it himself. Oh my dad bless him. Oh, he's priceless. Anyway, finally got to the point where we've got a finished card. So we've made our own embellishment. We've put a few little flowers over the top. Um, cut And I actually only used two die cuts. Cut off the ends from here. Don't forget to cut them at the right angle. And then, and when you are making your little vellum scrolls, roll them up really tightly and put a piece of glue all the way along the vellum so that when you roll it, it holds it in place. Sorry. 
Oh dear, I'm laughing so much. Um, thank you again for your company. And um, you know, in my head, you do talk back to me. So it's really nice to have a chat. And I'll see you next time.